Hey, well, good morning, good morning. Y'all awake? Good morning. Oh, it is such a, a beautiful, crisp fall, kind of autumn morning. I, is this fall yet? It's just, it just kind of feels good to the bones. I don't know. Anyway, it is good to gather for worship of and praise. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Welcome to praise worship this morning. If you didn't grab one of these, you can go back out and grab one. If you didn't grab one of these... You can go grab one as well. Uh, we get to have communion today. Uh, but we're just going to jump into worship. I always try to sneak in the announcements on Praise Worship Sunday, and that's not how it goes. So let's just pray. Uh, bow your heads with me. God, we give you so much thanks that you are our Savior, that you hold us in the palm of your hand, that you are our foundation for life and for everything that you've got us. And so you gather us together and you teach us your word and and you show us your love and and you call us to live it out. And so just keep walking with us this morning as we get to sing praise to you and just, um, we thank you, Lord. All this we pray in Jesus' name. We say amen. Amen. And so I'm going to go ahead and invite Holy Commotion on up here uh, to kick us off in worship. And we just get to give, just get to give praise to God this morning. Um, Please stand and sing with us. Our first song is Here I Am to Worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy altogether wonderful to me king of all days oh so highly exalted glorious in heaven above humbly you came to the earth you created all for love's sake became poor here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me Upon that cross, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Um, the next song we are singing is Ten Thousand Reasons. So Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing 
your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show from the earth and the cross, I died to beg. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dad to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen, amen, amen. It is good to give praise to the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. Please be seated, and I want to invite our kiddos up for story time. Or do you just want me to read to all of you? You want me to read to all of you? Story time, Pastor? All right, keep your seats. We, we'll do it that way. Uh, you know, it is two weeks until we get to have Rally Sunday. I am super excited about that. Now, you know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about Sunday school. I'm excited about having our kids share what activities they have been doing. I'm also excited that we need to give each of you a blue stick because we're going to have all church Sunday school in two weeks. So uh, if you haven't been practicing blooming at home to get ready for it, you need to start practicing
get some round of applause, snaps and claps for Holy Commotion. I was telling them when I come in this morning, there's nothing like coming to church and hearing them warming up and practicing. It's just, it is just a gift. Uh, it makes my heart sing. And so, hey, a few announcements as, as we kind of just jump into worship. Uh, we get to bless backpacks later on in the service. If you brought your backpacks, uh, we want to bless them. If you didn't bring a backpack, we want to bless uh, you. So we're going to either bless you and your backpack, or we're going to bless just you. Uh, either way, we want to give you a blessing. Are any of you going to school soon? Is that starting? Is that like right around the corner? It's, it, oh, ooh. Is summer over? Ooh. Anyway, we want to give you a blessing because we believe in starting out on the right foot uh, and, and just to, to ask God's blessing upon you uh, is the right foot for us. That's later on in the service. Also, how many of you are not going to school this week? I'm not going back to school this week. We still want to bless you as well. So we're going to have a blessing for you. And that's true whether, uh, you know, whatever you bring to work or if, are any of you retired? We, we want to bless you as well, so just know that we're not going to leave you out. Sound good? Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah, we want to give you a blessing too. Uh, as I said, uh, Rally Sunday is in two weeks. It is all church Sunday school. Uh, we're going to kick it off. We're going to bless our Sunday school uh, staff. We're just going to give thanks to God for them, uh, and we're going to get to glue together. It's going to be wonderful. I hear holy commotions kicking us off on that Sunday as well. Uh, you are. And so uh, kicking us off that Sunday, and then we'll go into uh, kind of that craft growing in faith uh, just together sort of time. Uh, it was such a hit when we did it last time in, what was that, May or June? Somebody help me out. June, thank you, thank you, thank you. My brain is just foggy this morning. I am uh, still recovering from a cold a little bit. I don't know if you can tell that. Uh, September 14th, our confirmation parent youth pastor meeting. Oh, confirmation has started. I am excited. September 14th, if you are a 7th grader or an 8th grader and, uh, or you're a parent of 7th grader or 8th grader, just know that that is happening. We've got a barbecue this Wednesday, September 7th, for our 7th graders through 12th. That was kind of hard to say. Uh, September 7th, this Wednesday, barbecue, 7th graders through 12th. So do you all know about the barbecue if you're a high schooler or middle schooler? If not, does Diane Rislow want to give a wave? Is Diane Rislow, uh, one of our two Diane Rislows, uh, come find this one. She'll hook you up. If you find this one over here, she'll point you in the right direction. Uh, just kind of kicking off Spy, which is pretty cool, our uh, St. Paul's youth group. Uh, let me see what else needs to be said. Stick around and fellowship and coffee afterwards. It looks like the coffee was made strong today. Oh, my goodness. And so um, anything else that needs to be said? Fair enough. So, 
If you're on council and you thought you were going to get out of church quick, <laughs> we're going to have a meeting after. It's going to be a brief meeting, I'll say that. Oh, you've counted. You've made sure. It's, it's, it's legitimate now. I, I do have one more announcement. As a part of Rally Sunday, uh, we wanted to do something special. Uh, so we're going to get Blado's Donuts. I'm a sucker for Blado's Donuts. I may have an addiction. I may go down there uh, once a week. Uh, and so I'm just going to get a smorgasbord of donuts. It's a word, I think. Some of you give me looks, um, but if you have a favorite donut, let me know. Otherwise, I might just get like a hundred uh, maple bacon bars because that's my favorite, and then I assume everybody else loves them. So if you've got a favorite, let me know. Hit me up. Write it on your green sheet, and we'll get that taken care of so you can find the donut that you love. I think that's all that I needed to say, and so let us recenter ourselves uh, for worship. God, it is good to be your people. It is good to know your love. And you call us to follow you, right? You call us to, to serve you and to, to, to live life as a reflection of your love. And sometimes that seems hard. It, it is a commitment, Lord, to follow you in the way that we live. And sometimes that can seem overwhelming or, or difficult. And so just give us a moment of pause this morning to, to reflect and examine our lives and, and the ways that you're moving through us and with us and just to revive our faith, to strengthen us in our, in our life for you, just to, to build us up to, and keep on encouraging us, Lord, as we live for you. And that's our prayer this morning. That's our hope for this church, my hope for this church. All this we pray in Jesus' name. We say amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. So if I could ask you to rise for, uh, in reverence of the gospel, we're going to hear from St. Luke, the 14th chapter. This is the scripture reading that gets to center us. And it goes like this. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciples. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether, to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it will begin to ridicule, laugh at him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to, to finish. Or, or what king going out to wage war against another king will not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciples if you do not give up all of your possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. We say praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Church... There is something about this text that seems to invite us to go all in and living our faith, right? To go all in and living our faith. And I, I'm not sure if it's the metaphor about making sure that you have enough bricks before you build your tower, or maybe it's the metaphor about the size of your military before you go into combat, uh, combat excuse me, or if it's the uh, metaphor about turning from father and mother and taking up a cross and following Jesus. And yet there is something, something about this text, wouldn't you agree, that invites us to go all in when it comes to being Christians. So a story, right? Uh, you ready? You ready? As a new parent, as a new parent, I watch how some of you raise your kids. It may seem, sound creepy that I watch you, 
Uh, but I just want to be the best parent that I can be. And so I try to pick up uh, tips and, and tricks and, and things that I think will uh, work, seem, things that seem to work as a parent, and, and, and things that might work for my own kiddo, John Henry. And there are some of you who have this rule, and, and tell me if this rule sounds familiar. Some of you have this rule that if your kid starts something, they have to finish it. Does that sound familiar to any of you? It should sound, yeah, right? So if they start school band, hypothetically, and you hook them up with a trumpet or a violin or like whatever they play, uh, they are committed to finish out that year, right? If they start football, then they have to play until the end of the season that even if they come to you a couple of months into it and they hate it, oh, I hate it, mom and dad, please don't make me go, uh, they've got to complete the season. They're going to finish the year because they started it, right? Next year is a different conversation. If they don't want to play next year, they don't have to play next year, but this year they've made a commitment, so they're going to finish it. Does that sound true for any of you as a parent style? I love this. I love, there's some heads nodding, right? Right? I, I like this way of parenting because it makes you think about, do I really want to be a part of this? Right? Do I, I really want to invest this much time and energy in band or football or insert whatever, right? Do I really want to make this commitment? Am I willing to go all in and carry it through to the end of the year? You've got to kind of weigh the costs in that moment of time and commitment up front because you know if you commit, you've got to carry it through. You with me? Yeah. And y'all, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what I want for my son. If he's in football or band or scouting or really whatever else he's into, I, I want him to carry whatever he does all the way through. And this is also what I want for you and for me and our life in Christ, that if we are going to be Christ followers, that we get to make that commitment and then follow it all the way through. Are you with me on that transition? Everybody say yes. I can start over. Okay, good. Right? That, that we get to commit to, 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 to sticking with it, that we get to weigh what Jesus means for our life and the way that we spend our time, the, the way that we spend our money and our resources and, and everything that we are. And can we go all in? Can we make that commitment to go all in? You with me, church? Because this is my prayer for all of us. Can I get an amen? Which brings me to another story. You ready? You ready? Okay. Sometimes saying yes to Jesus means having to say no to a whole lot of other things. And the thing that I have noticed is that there are about 80 million things that you can do on a Sunday or a Wednesday or really any day of the week, and that sometimes saying yes to faith means having to say no to other things that happen, right? Sometimes saying yes to faith things means saying to say no to other things that happen. One of my biggest struggles as a parent, this is confession time, one of my biggest struggles as a parent is what do I do for John Henry when he's in sports and other activities on a Sunday morning. And y'all, I don't have an easy answer for that because I want him to make friends and I want him to be with his buddies. And yet, how do we navigate it as parents, right, uh, who, who want faith for our kids? How do we navigate this? I struggle with this, right? And it's not only sports stuff. Because tell me if this is true for you, when it comes to work, sometimes I go overboard. You, any, any of you do that? I'm the only one. Me, the, anybody else? Right? I, right I, I sometimes go overboard. I, I sometimes overfunction. I sometimes ugh, don't tie, have, take time to have a Sabbath. Ugh, right? And to rest. Here's my confession. When your job is the pastor, it's easy to let those little spiritual practices slide. And, 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 and how do we go all in if church feels like a chore? Because I'm pretty sure that's not Jesus' intent for us as Christ followers. 
I'm pretty sure that's not Jesus' intent for us as Christ followers. And so how do we make space for Jesus to live as Jesus' followers, and not in some guilt-induced way, but in this reflect the love we have come to know in Jesus sort of way. How do we get to live that? If you sense some tension in myself and in the sermon, you would be correct because there is tension here that Jesus is inviting us into to, to wrestle with this as Christian peoples, right? We get to wrestle with this as Christian peoples and what does it take to live a life following Jesus? You with me on that? There is tension that God invites us into here. Because not everything is easy, is it? One of my uh, youth, one of my youth in, in the last church that I got to serve, uh, she was planning on going uh, on a mission trip over the summer with us. And uh, we had been fundraising for a couple of months. And then uh, she realized that she was supposed to be at like a cheerleading camp uh, event, whatever. Uh, and that was the same week as the mission trip. And so uh, this youth, her name's Hannah. Um, hopefully she doesn't, well, maybe she does watch the sermons from all the way in Nebraska. I don't know. Anyway, so Hannah went to her coach and said, you know, I would love to be there at camp, but my church is doing a mission trip that week and so I, I'm wondering if I can miss so that I can go serve on this mission trip. And her coach's response to her was, no, no, you cannot go. That if you're going to miss cheerleading camp, then maybe you should reconsider whether you should be on this team at all. I thought it was a little harsh. And so when Hannah said that she was going to serve and that the mission trip was most important to her, she ended up having to quit her cheerleading team to go. And I have the utmost of respect for her, right? Because there are all of these choices that we have to make in life about what are our priorities? What are our priorities? And what's most important to us? What is core to our identity, who we are, and to be true to that? And that was true of Hannah and her cheerleading and choosing to go on the mission trip. She knew that we would still be there for her as her church. If she chose to go to cheerleading instead of the mission trip, she knew that we would still love her even if she didn't go on the mission trip. And yet her heart was in this place of serving and following Jesus. And so what she chose to do was say, hey, coach, then I can't be a part of this because this mission trip, this following Jesus thing is closer to my heart than this other thing. This other thing is extra, but this mission trip, this following Jesus, that's where it's at for me. Can I get an amen? Right? Sometimes our youth teach us the coolest things about faith. And life is full of decisions. And some of them are really big, and some of them are just small parts and what we get to do as God's people is navigate them as best as we can. And that's not to say we always get it right, or that we'll, we won't drop the ball, that we won't mess up. Even when we do, God still has love for us, right? The thing that we're invited into this morning is what does it look like to put God first in everything? What does it look like to make the, the commitment to Jesus and to go all in and to try to live it out? You with me on that? Can I get a yeah? Right? And so last part of the sermon, I'm going to wrap it up. You ready? Can I get a yeah? Making a commitment for a lifetime of being all in for Jesus, that's a really long time. Right? To make a commitment to follow Jesus for a lifetime, that's a really long time. And so maybe make a commitment for a year, for this coming academic year. Make a commitment to follow Jesus for a year and try to stick to it. Right? Try to make church every Sunday. Try to make Jesus a priority. Try to live the love of Jesus even when people drive you up the wall. Right? To live this thing that is faith. And even if it gets hard after a couple of months 
Or you come to your parent and you say, oh, God, I really don't like this thing that I've committed to, right, to remind yourself that you have made this commitment and to, to stick to it, to keep trying to live your faith, that even when it gets hard to know that God has got you, even when faith gets hard, know that God has got you. What's it look like to go all in for Jesus? Because you have been invited as a Christ follower to see what it looks like to go all in for Jesus. Can I get a final amen? Amen. And so we are going to sing, I do believe. I'm going to go ahead and invite Holy Commotion back up here, if I'm remembering correctly. And we're going to sing together thy word. And also, this is a time that we get to jump into our offering as well. It's our sermon hymn as well as our offering hymn. And so, if I could invite the ushers to help me out with that too. to my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way. So, you know, when this offering basket goes around, we get to, we get to put uh, these green forms in there. We get to put uh, our money and our wallets in there. All right. More so, though, we get to put our lives in there, that this is a, a way to live. This is what we're invited to, that we are an offering uh, before God. We get to be an offering to God as we go all in. Can I get an amen? Amen. You know, if I was getting back to like my Southern Baptist roots, maybe we should have an altar call. You think we should do that? Is, is that too far? Is that too much for us this morning? Somebody say yes. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so we're going to go now into this time of prayer. And so uh, I'll start us off. And if you've got something on your heart, uh, something, you know, your hopes, your dreams, whatever you want to lift up, um, I'm going to kick us off. And then just as you feel moved to jump on in. Sound good? And so let's pray. God, you know us inside and out, right? Everything that we are and everything that we're not. 
And we get to come before you this morning and just place ourselves as an offering for you, right? To weigh what it means to take up your cross, to be your disciple, to go all in. And what a wonderful thing to know that even when we drop the ball, even when we fall short or stumble, that you've got us, Lord. You've got us. And pick us up and dust us back off and invite us to live for you again. That's grace upon grace, and it's good to know. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Others. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Are there others? So God, we just get to lift all of these prayers up to you. Those that are spoken out loud and those that are whispered on our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know, it is good to know that God is with us, invites us into this beloved community, that we have communion with the Lord. And so if you want to take up uh, that communion, those elements that we were given earlier, we get to remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, how Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray that prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so if you want to take back that, uh, that plastic wrapper, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And then the foil. And the grape juice. Take and drink. This is Christ's blood shed for you. and receive this blessing, dear church. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We say amen. Amen. And so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to invite uh, Holy Commotion on back up here for our final uh, song, our final hymn. I was going to say, uh, Build Your Kingdom. And then we're going to do the backpack blessing right after that. I did not forget about y'all. You good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Holy commotion. Um, please stand and sing Build Your Kingdom here with us.
then uh, please be seated. I'm going to go ahead and invite our students. And, uh, you know, if you are a teacher or an administrator, if you're going back to school this week, come on up here. I want to give you a blessing. Please come on up. If you've got your backpacks with you, bring them. If you don't have a backpack because you don't even know if you're going to be able to bring your backpack, just come on up here. We want to give you a blessing. So uh, students, teachers, administrators, whether you are two or 92, so this means our little ones as well. If you're going to school, whether that is uh, kindergarten or preschool or just, you know, wherever, uh, come on up. I want to give you a blessing. And so uh, I'm going to invite all of you back there in the congregation. I want you to stand up. You're going to have to stand for this one. And I want you to, to raise your hands on high in that ancient posture of blessing. I want you to give uh, these people a blessing as well. And so, and, and now just imagine all the love and support and encouragement pouring out of your hands, right? Uh, from the tips of your toes all the way to the top of your head, through your fingertips and your palms onto these lovely people. We're going we're gonna to bless them in this year of, be uh, beginning of this year of learning and growing and getting to know uh, a little better God's uh, holy wisdom. And so we're going to pray. A loving God, be with these people. Students, teachers, administrators, and custodians, uh, be with them and help them as they begin a new year of learning, uh, teaching, growing, and serving. May their minds and their pencils be sharp. May their lunches never be forgotten at home. May their pink pearl erasers help them to remember that mistakes are okay. In fact, they are the most important part of the process. And God, thank you for glue sticks and homework folders and laptops and crisp new notebooks waiting to be filled. Thank you, Lord, for schools and libraries and teachers. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of curiosity and for your wisdom that is all around. And so, God of wisdom, bless these backpacks and those who bear them. We pray this in everything in the name of your Son, who left his parents so that he could sit and learn at the feet of those rabbis in the temple. We pray this in everything in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And so it is good to bless you. Oh, can you feel it? Can you feel Billy Blessed? Right? And just know that all of these folks are praying for you, not just today, but throughout the entire school year. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so, and then a blessing for all of you, because I notice not everyone is a teacher, student, or custodian, or administrator. And so whether you have your work bag with you, or your wrench, or your pliers, or your notepad, or your duffel bag, or that's all at home, if you got it, hold it out. If not, that's okay. Receive this blessing. Right? You may stand at an assembly line or in a kitchen, uh, by a field or next to a cow. Uh, you may crank things with a wrench, bang things with a hammer, or move dirt with a plow. You might spend your days at a keyboard, bailing hay, or driving things here to there. Uh, you might sell things over a counter or from a desk, be retired, and not have a care. And whatever you do and whatever you bring to your job, receive this blessing. Know that you are a child of the Lord and beloved by God. Can I get an amen? And so go in peace, dear church. Be committed to Jesus. Be persevering in faith and be compassionate to your neighbor and to yourself. Can I get a final amen? Go in peace. Praise the Lord.